Engineers, solving problems. This lesson is gonna go over the first four steps of the engineering design process. The one that we call the concept stage. I will eventually go over criteria and constraints, and I promise that in this video, I'll actually put the criteria in criteria and constraints in constraints. The first step is to define the problem. When we define a problem, that's self-explanatory. If something doesn't work, the problem is why it doesn't work, most likely. If your pencil sharpener doesn't sharpen pencils, there's your problem. Pencil sharpener doesn't sharpen pencils. Another problem might be that you need to develop a computer that can do so many calculations per minute, that can run a certain program using a certain amount of power in a certain form factor or size. That would be defining the problem. It's very specific. Now, the other thing is that when I define a problem, I need a SMART goal. A SMART goal is something that is specific. It's very to the point of what we want. It is measurable. Money is measurable. Time is measurable. Weight is measurable. And of course, measurements and size is measurable. Those are some of the things that can be measurable. You want to, at the end of your design process, be able to evaluate something. It, that's where it needs to be measurable. A means attainable. We are not going to say that we can go to space in a cardboard box in a week. That's not attainable, at least not yet. Cardboard's not that exciting. The R stands for relevant. It's a goal that's relevant, that means something to you. It applies only to you. You're not going to set a goal for somebody else's project. And the T is time. You have to put a time limit on your designs. If you don't, you could be designing until the cows come home. We don't want to wait until the cows come home. For the paper airplane project, we have two weeks. That's the end of our design project, then we move on. So your time for that is gonna be at the end of two weeks. Now, brainstorming is usually a group effort where you come up with ideas, crazy or not, to solve your problem. Since our knowledge of paper airplanes may or may not be the greatest, your brainstorming session is probably going to be very short. You'll jot down whatever ideas you have for solving your paper airplane problem. Researching for ideas is where you go to a broader source. That might be experts, it could be the internet, it could be the library and going through books. In this particular case, you might look in an origami book or a paper airplane website or a website devoted totally to paper airplanes. Research for ideas from people who have gone before you. Then write those ideas down. This stuff needs to be written down. Four, identify criteria and constraints. Now that is the purpose of this video. That is what we're gonna spend the most time on. A criteria is something that you must have in your design. It's a must have. A constraint is something that limits your design. It's going to put it inside of a box. Maybe not always, but criteria is something you've got to include in your project. So for your paper airplane, a criteria could be, although this is not allowed, but just hear me out, a paper clip on the front is your criteria or a staple to hold it together. Or the criteria might be a piece of tape to hold the two halves together. That is an example of a criteria, something you must have in your design. A computer, you might have a criteria of 32 gigabytes of RAM, random access memory, or a two terabyte solid state drive as the main drive in that computer. Those are criteria, things you've got to include. Constraints, on the other hand, are the opposite. Constraints are things that keep you from making what you want to make. It limits your design. So if you had a constraint of $100, most likely you're not gonna be able to build the best computer. Even if I gave you a constraint of $200, you're not gonna have the latest and greatest computing technology. 
you're probably going to be surfing on a Pentium 3 if you can actually get it to connect to the internet. So constraints limit your design. Now, one of the limitations for our paper airplane project is you can't use notebook paper. The only thing that you're allowed to use is computer paper or copy paper. That is a constraint. It limits what you can build. Another constraint that you have is that you cannot cut your paper. That's going to limit quite a few of those paper airplane designs because you can't cut it. Now, at the end, I might allow you guys to tear some ailerons or flaps in the end of your wings, but that's it. Really, the criteria is going to be that you use folds. Now, a constraint is something that limits you. You're not going to be able to make the F-14. That's a constraint. That's going to keep you from making certain things. So let's go over it again. Defining the problem, finding out what you want, what you need specifically, and setting a SMART goal that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time sensitive. Brainstorming is coming up with rapid fire ideas quickly as possible, whether they're sane or insane. Research for ideas means to go find the experts. Go see what's already done out there. See if you can modify that. Write both of these things down in your engineering notebooks. Finally, identify your criteria and constraints. Most of the time I'll give those to you. Sometimes I won't. You need to list out what criteria you have to have in your design and what constraints limit your design. Now, on the topic of constraints, there are other types of constraints that may not be given by anybody in your company. Pollution could be a constraint. It could be legality. Copying someone else's design might constrain you and what you can make might limit you on a design. Go look at some of the cell phone lawsuits of how one cell phone looks like somebody else's cell phone and they get sued over it because it feels like they're copying their design even though it is simple geometric shapes, the legal side can constrain you. There's legal, environmental, there's ethical standards. Um, go look at stem cell research and you might find some ethical things in there. Um, cloning animals, cloning people could be ethically wrong. Um, there are moralistic ideas. I don't know if that's a word, but that probably runs along lines of ethics. There are quite a few things that can constrain. So with this information today, or whatever day you might be using the engineering design process, this is your concept stage. We go through and we come up with ideas. In the next two stages, we will take these conceptual ideas and they will eventually form your final product.